Howdy Tinker Nerds! In my honest opinion, the internet is the absolute best and the absolute worst place in the world. But love it or hate it, most of us are always connected. And if we lose our internet connection, even temporarily for any reason, oh my gosh, the world is ending. Only we could download the internet for offline use. Then if you lose an internet connection, you still got the internet. Download the internet? Seriously? Yes, seriously. Like the whole internet? Well, a portion of the internet. Tinker not, you better explain yourself. Okay, enough beating around the bush. What I mean by downloading the internet is downloading entire websites to your computer so that you can access them offline. Just like if you were to download a video like this one, hey, stop downloading. All right, let's get to this. The first thing that we need is a web server. Luckily for you, in my last project, I showed you how to make a portable hotspot so that you could access your media offline. The one thing that hotspot didn't do, however, was host web pages yet. So jumping into our Raspberry Pi hotspot that we created in our last project, let's install a web server. I'm gonna be using Light TPD because, well, it's light. After it's installed, you can test to see if it's running by opening up a web browser on a different computer and connecting to the hotspot and then typing in the Pi's IP address. Wunderbar! And since a lot of websites are now PHP based, let's also install PHP for Lite TPD. Enable it for use and then edit the PHP configuration file to run PHP FPM instead of PHP CGI. Now we can reload Lite TPD and then create a sample PHP file in the var www HTML folder, which is where all of our future web pages are going to be stored. Add this little script, save it, and test it out. We got a web server! Now we just need things to serve. Let's download that internet, y'all! Before we get too download crazy, let me offer a few words of caution. Try to avoid downloading really large websites. Sites like Wikipedia can take up several terabytes of space on your hard drive. Think about the storage. If you download a website that has a lot of videos and images and audio files attached to it, then it's gonna take a long, long, long time for it to download. Not to mention, it as well would take up a lot of hard drive space. Second, we're gonna be focusing on websites and not sites that link to other websites like Google. Third, this is for local use only. Please do not rebroadcast these websites to the internet. And do not intentionally copy someone else's site without their permission first. Okay, here we go. The magical tool for downloading websites is wget. Wait, you mean that same Linux command that you can use to download zip files, images, videos? Oh, makes sense. wget is primarily known as a Linux utility, but you can also install it for Mac and Windows if that's your platform. Okay, so how does this work? Well, you start with the wget command and then you choose a web page. I'm going to go with the web classic toastytech.com. So add that, but do not hit enter yet so that we don't overload that web host servers and get blacklisted from their site it's important to add a wait switch and a limit rate switch these switches wait three seconds between requests and limit the data transfer rate if you want more information on wget switches you can skim through their documentation at this website all right let's keep going the mirror switch recursively mirrors the website and then convert links makes the link suitable for a locally hosted file. Page requisites grabs the CSS, images, and other files needed to load the page. Use no parent if you're pulling a specific set of pages but don't want to download the entire domain. To mimic a specific browser, use user agent followed by a compatible browser name. I know that's a lot, but we got one more switch before we can test this out. And that is the directory prefix switch, which lets us specify where to download our website to. So this is the current command we have. Yeah, I know it's a mess. But if you wanted to shorten it, you can use the shorthand versions of these switches so that it looks something like this. But with everything ready to go, let's hit enter and see what happens. Ah, right, we need to run it as administrator. Okay, now it should start downloading all the files for the web page, and in the website folder, we can see it building up the directory structure. When it's through, we can test it out on a different computer by connecting to our Pi's hotspot again and then typing in the Pi's IP address into our web browser, followed by the directory structure of the web page. It should pull up the web page as it looks online. 
and then you can click on the links to make sure that everything works properly. Pretty sweet. Again, please be smart and careful with this utility. Be respectful of the site owners and their intellectual property and do not repost these websites online. That said, we are well on our way to hoarding the internet and tucking it in our bunker as we prep for doomsday. Just a side note, if you don't like the command line and want a graphical interface, then you can use a program like Darcy Ripper, which is free to download, or HT Tracker, which is open source. What's your favorite software for downloading websites? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.